Hello everyone, uh, happy new year, happy Christmas, and welcome to the last episode in this year, uh, 2023, of Iron Beetle. So it's going to be a magical episode because it's going to be a Christmas lecture. Uh, let me explain myself. So, uh, and let me share my screen, uh, to not repeat the most embarrassing mistake of this year, uh, let's, as usual, start the recap of the previous episode. So, in the previous episode, I promised that we are starting a new arc of our journey to understand Target Beetle, and that arc is consensus. And what we were doing last time is that we looked at this construct of a replicated state machine, where we combine ideas uh, about treating uh, a system as a state with ideas about treating a system as a sequence of events via this distributed log, snapshots, uh, checkpoints, and whatnot. And that is a good lead into consensus because to make this construct work in distributed world uh, with more than one computer, you need consensus. But today we actually are going to completely forget about that because like consensus actually is like two rather distinct and separate things. On the one hand, uh, consensus is a kind of practical algorithm. It's like a program which you run on computers to do stuff. And that's what we are going to dive into next year. But this year, this last lecture, I would love to focus on a different aspect of consensus, and that it is a mathematical theory. So really, it's kind of like a question about a certain kind of a discrete system, and uh, it for a long time was like genuinely uh, unknown whether like certain discrete systems can behave in a particular way, and consensus was a demonstration. Uh, constructive proof that, yeah, like indeed, like sort of behaviors are admissible. And that is kind of like, you know, uh, when you're reading consensus literature, you should like always uh, keep those two formulations in mind, like whether they speak about mathematics and proofs or whether we speak about practice. Because although kind of like, although those two are related, it might be hard to understand both of them at the same time. That's why my idea here is that in this lecture, uh, we focus squarely on mathematics. Uh, and again, kind of like mathematics is like very like loud and big word here because like there's not going to be like any equations 
uh, any like formulas or whatever. It's kind of like, you know, the simple kind of mathematics where you have like five things and you uh, reason about the relationship between them. It's like not like, it's, it's not going to use like any kind of like advanced body of knowledge from analysis of algebra, but still it is very much mathematics. Yeah, and after we uh, deal with that, uh, we are like going to uh, dive into practical aspects, pragmatics of consensus rather than mathematics next year. So the plan today is that I'm not going to explain uh, consensus theory because, well, uh, I was like, trying to like understand consensus for a long time and really kind of like I really read like several papers for like five times in a row, like Paxos, Paxos made it easy, and then Raft, which is like arguably like the easy to understand thing. And like, I mean, it did, didn't really click for me like for many years. I was like struggling with this idea, with this algorithm, with this mathematical theory uh, for a long time. And then it clicked for me. And it clicked for me when rather than trying to understand an algorithm and consensus algorithm in its full generality, I went uh, on to kind of like construct it myself to kind of like see not the end result, but how we are going to get to the end result. And that's what we're going to do. We're going to just solve consensus. We will uh, build a series of solutions, each just slightly more complicated than the previous one. And all of our solutions will be broken, except the last one. The last one uh, will be hopefully kind of like working proof that, hey, consensus is possible. And uh, hopefully each step, each uh, like complication is going to be like relatively obvious and relatively simple because that's that, that's the trick. Uh, like if you just like, want to understand consensus from zero, it's like it's tricky. Like it's like it's very easy to create an illusion that you understand it, but it's actually hard to like you know really really get it. While if you, uh, at least for me, again, everyone's different. Uh, everyone's uh, learning style is like completely, uh, completely specific to a particular person. But for me, like once I saw this series of steps, it sort of became obvious. Okay, uh, let's start. And well, as a fair warning, usually I try to aim episodes to be about an hour long. This time I just not going to look at the clock. Like we, uh, it will take uh, how long it takes to explain consensus uh, because I don't want to split it. And we start with uh, a different. We start with an uh, FLP impossibility result. Impossibility. What's that? Well, uh, that's a theory. Uh, a paper to be precise, and I, I love it because like the title of the paper is something like impossibility of consensus in a distributed system with a single faulty process. And like I love this title because it is like clickbaity and it's actually it's sort of true, but it is devoid of any nuance. And the trick is in the nuance, and all the nuance is actually kind of like in the body of the paper, and like once you understand it, you realize that hey, title kind of doesn't like give uh, justice to like the actual facts on the ground. It's so it's like it's not false, but like clearly like they uh, in like you know where this paper was written like in seventies. Uh, I don't actually remember the year. Like they clearly like wanted to make it to the top of hockey news on the top of Reddit uh, because yeah, like the art the art of a clickbait title for articles for papers is like good luck. Anyway. So, uh, and uh, yeah, let's kind of like cover this result. What exactly is it possible? Uh, and uh, how this squares with existence of like multiple consensus algorithms. But to do that, let's actually kind of like define the mathematics uh, we are talking about here. Okay, so uh, let's uh, delete impossibility and let's define uh, our world. So. Uh, we are going to uh, discuss a discrete system, a discrete system with uh, several machines. And let's use circles for machines. Okay, so uh, let's say that we have like three machines, and each machine has uh, 
serum internal sleep. And then uh, those machines are going to exchange uh, messages with each other. So let me also kind of like depict an abstract network uh, which holds messages. So this is like big network and it holds like messages which are from time to time delivered to our so let's Net, network. Yeah, this is this is network. Um, uh, and like those uh, those small things uh, here are messages, and uh, these are machines. So kind of like this. This is a picture. Uh, let's try to be more formal. So what is this? Okay, like that, let's not go all the way to hey everything is a set, but basically uh, we have uh, magic machines like finite ticks number. Uh, each machine has its certain internal state. So actually, here like there is like something, some, something inside, and like something, something different for like, every machine. Uh, and there are messages. Uh, like if you need connection, like multi set or like, maybe a set that can thermalize differently of messages. And this system is going to evolve over time. So what you see here is a snapshot of a system at a given point in time. And like the system is going to evolve. Like, okay, uh, this is this is evolving. And a core uh, idea here is that system evolves in discrete step. And a discrete step is that we pick a certain message. Let's like pick this red one, and then we go and deliver this message to a particular process. Uh, the process then goes, changes its internal state, and sends out uh, like zero or one or more messages uh, to the network. Uh, and this is happens this happens deterministically. So if we pin a particular process and a particular message uh, and a particular process state, then the result, like the resulting state and uh, the resulting uh, set of messages is going to be fully deterministic. So, okay, uh, let's kind of like say, okay, so this was like our initial state, then this message got uh, delivered, so let's remove it from the network. Although, uh, okay, let's come back to that in a second. And then we have kind of like two new messages here, and also this internal state changes to like something, uh, something else. Let me try to, yeah, let's say that it changes to a heart, uh, whatever. So uh, this is like a single atomic step. Uh, as soon as you pin a message and a process, the step is deterministic. However, there is no determinism in which message you pick. Uh, at any point in time, uh, you, allowed, you are allowed to pick any message in the network to deliver it to some process. So uh, let's uh, kind of like, uh, zoom out a little bit. So, okay, we kind of have this like one, two, three, and overall, like there's going to be a whole like trajectory which guides the evolution of our system. So, uh, we start in this state, then they go to this state, then to this state, then to this state, and uh, so on we go. At each particular point, it is crucial that a specific message gets chosen. Like maybe uh, yeah, this and like obviously I kind of like don't uh, like paint every different uh, change, every change that is uh, happening here. Like the states are actually different, so the messages are different. Uh, but yeah, you get the idea. So uh, this is like. A single trace of our discrete system as it evolves over time. 
Now, given that, uh, here, let's uh, scale this back to something, uh, something, uh, okay, something more reasonable. Okay, let's clean those uh, cave paintings, which should resemble internal state. Okay. Uh, let's, uh, let's let's leave it hanging. So okay, uh, no. Uh, how do we move it? To move canvas, hold mouse wheel or space bar while dragging, or use. Oh, yeah, I'm going to. It's, it's too complicated. I'm going to just to use the hand tool. Okay. So uh, the interesting part here is because the choice of the message is not deterministic, our potential history is actually not uh, not linear. So if we deliver this message, we go to this state. But if, say, we deliver this message, then we are going to go to this state. And this kind of like continues, really. Right? This state also might fork. So what we are looking actually is kind of like yeah uh most of the time we're going to kind of like think about like a single single linear history of like what actually happens um scroll back to okay it's 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 kind of drawing such a delightful piece of software Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. So most of the time, we are going to think about like a single uh, history, a single lineage of states as they evolve over time. But you always keep in mind that actually the history is branching. And like from every branch, there might be like different features. So yeah, that's like the system we are working with. And consensus is like a statement about those histories. So uh, let's now get slightly more specific. Again, let's scale everything and these things too, and then let's. Reset zoom, scroll back to content. Yeah. So, what is consensus? Uh, let's uh, pick inside those states. And let's say that the, in the initial state, each node has a dedicated value. And value is going to be there. How do you pronounce it? Diamond. Okay. I was, uh, I was hearing it's like rhombus or whatever, but it's diamond. Diamond is like much, uh, much simpler word. I know how to pronounce it, hopefully. Yeah. So, uh, a node starts with its own value, which is a rhombus, and as you see, colors are different. So, uh, yeah, so uh, each, each node has its own value. And what we want is that we want the nodes to uh, come to consensus. We want uh, to make it such that after like, many steps, so uh, here, uh, there are going to be like many steps, it's like uh, three dots. Uh, we want to get in a situation where like say the all decide that, hey, uh, the, the chosen value is me. Uh, so kind of like that's kind of like, uh, coming to an agreement. Uh, what we want from this consensus? Uh, and like let's let, let's think uh, let's think in, in like in terms of like trajectories. Uh, so actually, yeah, actually let's maybe let's do this slightly differently because like the initial state and if I know it, remember it's initial state and it's like this like might be different from the value that consensus uh, decides in the end. So let's actually kind of like say that. 
that's like the initial value is inside and the decided upon value is like on top. So uh, we want to, uh, and in a situation where all nodes decided uh, on the same value. Uh, now let's think in terms of trajectories. So uh, this here is like a fragment of a trajectory, but it doesn't necessarily mean that it's like the end because trajectories can be infinite. And kind of like, it might happen that at some point we like, everyone decided, okay, uh, uh, can we have a better microphone? That's actually, okay, let me check um, which microphone. Uh, well, uh, I, I'm afraid I'm using like the best microphone uh, I have uh, because like I like, uh, also have like uh, this thing, but uh, the re recording with uh, that one was actually uh, poor quality. So yeah, uh, I, will, uh, I, I will try to do something that no promises here. Uh, but hopefully you could like at least uh, understand something. Uh, so, okay. Uh, okay, yeah. Uh, well, let's get let's get back to consensus. So yeah, we started here. Then someone decided. Then like, everyone decided. Okay, like green is the answer. But what if then like after some time, like one decides, hey, actually, yeah, red red is the uh, red is the consensus value. That's going to be bad. And we kind of like want to forbid this. Again, you know, so if our consensus algorithm broken, uh, is broken, it might actually backtrack. Like a node uh, might say at one point, hey, I like green, but then the next point it says, hey, it is red. And uh, that would mean that like consensus is actually broken. So that's kind of like, uh, yeah, one property that we want here, that uh, if we decide that the value is consensus value that first this value uh, is a single value, They're like not going to be like two values, and second, we like the decision is made. Uh, the decision is uh, bulletproof and it's never going to be reversed. Uh, okay, uh, like hopefully, kind of like you like now roughly understand new things. So let's recap. Uh, we have a discrete system with a uh, network and uh, machines. Uh, machines are finite state, well, not necessarily finite state machines, but like state machines. They have like a sort of state, which might be just a bag of numbers. Uh, crucially, each machine start, starts with initial value. Then machines start exchanging messages. And the model here is that on every step, a single message is picked from the network and delivered to some machine. Uh, this machine consumes the message, produces a bunch of output messages, which are added to the network. Uh, like the algorithm which the system runs is basically the state transition rule, which says, hey, given this state of a machine and this input message, here is a thin vector of output messages. Uh, some states of machines are distinguished, uh, meaning that like a, step, a state says, hey, this machine has made a decision and it has decided on a particular date. So uh, we are looking for consensual algorithm. We are looking for a state transition uh, function uh, such that, well, uh, first of all, uh, if it's going to decide on some value, uh, like if a single machine is going to decide on some value, then everyone decides on this value. Second, uh, that uh, this value is durable. Uh, in if machine decided at one point that uh, certain value is the answer, then uh, at no later point it actually decides for a different value. And the third property uh, we want from this algorithm is that we want uh, to eventually decide. Uh, which value is an answer. Because obviously, if you just do nothing, like nothing happens, then you cannot choose two conflicting values. So kind of like your algorithm is safe, but it doesn't have uh, liveness. It doesn't give you a useful answer. 
which is like a theme uh, we're going to return uh, throughout uh, well this whole uh, series uh, that we want both safety and limits. We don't want bad things to happen. We don't want two values to be chosen, but we also want good things to happen eventually. Uh, we want some value to be chosen. Okay, and uh, let's add kind of like a couple of restrictions on uh, which messages could be delivered. Because, yeah, we could imagine uh, a trajectory where no message ever gets delivered. So uh, after every step, uh, we get exactly the same situation. And like obviously, like nothing happens there, but it's kind of like trivial. Like the network like completely doesn't exist. Uh, so we kind of like want to rule out here. And to rule out this, we add an extra requirement on the trajectories. We require that every message which gets into the network eventually gets delivered. So if this is a beginning of a trajectory, then we know that this message at some point is going to get delivered. Okay, maybe it would take us like one million steps to get the message delivered. But ultimately, uh, this is going to happen. But here's one exception. We also allow some machines to fail. And uh, when a machine fails, it kind of like completely, completely disappears. And messages to this machine never get delivered. But we kind of like don't want, again, if we allow everyone to fail, then we could say, OK, then like all three machines have failed, and then nothing interesting happens. So we also want to like bound the number of failures. And uh, essentially, our model is that we have machines which never fails, uh, uh, which don't fail, and messages to those machines get eventually delivered. And then we have like small number of machines which fail permanently. And messages for those aren't going to be delivered. So uh, what is this uh, FLP impossibility result? Uh, it says uh, this. OK, let's allow only a single machine to fail permanently. If you allow this, then it's not true that there exist, exists a consensus algorithm which finishes in finite number of messages. And again, this is like very wrong. This is an approximation of what theorem says. But uh, let's start with this to give you an intuition. So again, you could, again, uh, let's assume you are like in the 60s. You're like, no, you don't know mathematics here. You look at this problem and you say, hey, actually, what is like, what is possible for consensus algorithm? Can I like devise a state transition function which say, guarantees that all machines reach consensus after each machine sends like only 10 messages or like maybe only like, 1 million messages. Can I like get everyone send like 1 million messages and just like sort out what, what is uh, the answer? And the FLP uh, result uh, says, hey, this actually uh, is not possible. Uh, but actually it says like slightly, uh, slightly stronger uh, thing. So imagine you wrote your consensus algorithm, which allows machines to decide. And imagine you are like running it. And again, here we start thinking about like a tree of trajectories. Uh, so kind of like everything, everything starts to branch and we have like this infinite tree of like what might happen here. And what FLP result says is that there is a branch in this tree which never gets to consensus. So, okay, if we go like this branch, then we kind of like add in a situation where like the red node is decided. And if we go like the, this branch, then like A here are uh, like decided on green. But no matter uh, what algorithm you use, there is always going to be an infinite branch where algorithm makes progress 
uh, messages are delivered, nodes change the internal state, but no value ever gets selected. And that is uh, the core of the ideas. It's, it's not that kind of like consensus is impossible. Again, kind of like majority of the branches in this tree might actually uh, give you uh, a value. Kind of like optimistically, optimistically, consensus exists. What Chiron says is that the worst case, in the worst case, your system uh, might uh, be a delayed for uh, progress um, indefinitely. So if you drop just the right messages from the network, if you delay just the right messages from the network, then although eventually every message gets delivered, no progress in the system uh, is being made. And the money question here, if we come back to practice, is how bad is this worst case? We kind of know the lower bound, that hey, you know, we cannot reach consensus in finite amount of steps, but it's always going to be a sequence of very unfortunate events which prevents us from deciding anything. But what is like the minimum amount of connectivity? What is the minimum, the shortest window where the network is good, where we can like actually decide on a day. And that's what consensus algorithm actually provides us. They kind of like uh, say, hey, this is algorithm, which is safe, but it also is uh, live for like fairly benign networking conditions. And kind of like in the simplest uh, terms, uh, kind of like you could say that for every trajectory, where a majority of machines stay connected for long enough, so all messages between those machines get delivered promptly, in uh, all that, all those trajectories, consensus actually selects a value. Again, there might be like worse of trajectories where, uh, say, like only two machines uh, can talk at a time at any given po point in time, and those are not going to reach consensus. But like, again, that, that's, that's okay, that's mathematics, that's uh, impossible to uh, bother with. But if we have enough connectivity, then yeah, we, we seize consensus, we like make a decision. Uh, okay, I'm not going to uh, prove you uh, FLP uh, theorem, it's, it's not hard, it's like slightly like technical, you need to like, uh, like to understand it, like you need to like, a bunch of drawings, uh, but I'm kind of just going to give like a tiny, tiny bit of intuition. So uh, let's uh, say that we are in a particular, okay, let's reset, I was zoomed to oh, 10%. Uh, okay, uh, let's say that like uh, abstractly represent the state of the whole system as like a black box. So this is like messages, a network, machines, etc., etc. Uh, let's call the state ambiguous if it could evolve to a state where two different values are decided. So kind of like, let's say that here we decided for green and here we decided for red. Uh, okay, actually that was red, but this will be green. Okay, so kind of like after like many steps, we evolve here, and uh, we evolve here. So this state is ambiguous, depending on the order of messages uh, which are delivered. Uh, you might end uh, in like you might decide for one value or another value, and the core like lemma of uh, FLP theory is that. If you are in an ambiguous state, you could pick any message from the network and kind of like put that message apart. So don't deliver uh, this message for a time being and uh, let your state actually, uh, let me kind of move it here. Okay, and this one I also want to move. Yeah. You can let the state evolve for like a certain amount of time and 
then you deliver a message. So this last state uh, is the result of a plan like this initially delayed message. And this state continues to be ambiguous. So to phrase it in another way, let's say you have a state and the state is ambiguous. Then you could deliver any message that currently exists in the network such that the state remains ambiguous. You might have to deliver like a bunch of messages before that message you want to deliver, but that doesn't matter. Like, the message you want to, like, you, uh, you kind of like, can get there and the state still uh, remains ambiguous. And that kind of like, gives you uh, the description of this worst case where all messages are delivered but no decision uh, ever gets made. So you start with an ambiguous state. And again, another lemma in the theorem that, hey, actually, we have an initial state, which is ambiguous. And then you kind of like pick the first message, you deliver it in such a way that the state remains ambiguous. Then you pick the second uh, oldest message and deliver it, and so on, so on. So eventually, every message gets delivered, but no decision uh, ever gets made. And uh, this requires that a single process can fail probably. So in this like infinite trajectory, uh, like uh, the possibility that at any given point in time, any particular process might be dead, uh, actually uh, prevents us from achieving consensus. Okay, so uh, to recap, uh, consensus is uh, very much possible uh, if uh, things do not align in the worst possible way. Yeah. In the worst possible way, there is always going to be this trajectory through the events where like no decision is being made. But well, we are engineers. Our job is to uh, solve the problem for like the good case, the average case. And for the worst case, uh, our only requirement is that we remain safe. It never should be the case that two uh, values get chosen. So essentially, consensus is a battle for liveness. Uh, given uh, safety guarantees. So safety we cannot compromise, and for liveness we want to get as much of it as possible. Okay, uh, with uh, FLP uh, result clear, let's actually invent our own consensus algorithm. Uh, I'm excited, like that's, that's nice. Okay, let's, let, let, let's do it. And uh, let's start with like very intuitive, a very simple algorithm for how you could choose a value. Okay, let's say we have like three, three machines, and each machine has a different colored initial value. Uh, okay, red one and a blue one. And we kind of like want to wait, uh, chose, uh, ch chose the right one. So how can we do it? Well, uh, like it's, it's a first step. Uh, let's say that they just exchange the values we have so that every machine gets, okay, every machine gets to know what values are, what values are available in the cluster. And then each machine casts exactly one vote for a value. And let's say that like, hey, this one votes blue, and this one always votes blue, and this one votes red. And then the value with most votes wins. So in this case, kind of like, okay, let's, uh, okay. We use top four decisions, so let's say we like, plug votes uh, to the side, like, like you know, like you mentioned, they're kind of like putting their votes in a ballot box. That's why it's on the side. Okay, so uh, we see here is like two blue, one red. And that means that the blue value is decided. So, okay, this algorithm is like obviously safe because there can be only one majority and uh, once that majority uh, decides, well, we have a winner and uh, we cannot roll back uh, and now it cannot change its opinion because we only have one vote, so we can 
it, it works it works correctly. Well, this breaks. Well, as every single one of our algorithm, this breaks the limits. It is very easy for this algorithm to deadlock. And uh, let's say that this one didn't vote for blue, it vote for green. And then we have for every value just a single vote. And there is no majority, there is no win. So our voting is stuck. Kind of like this algorithm is safe, but it is not, it doesn't have limits and it doesn't have it in kind of like in a very obvious way. So even in this situation, even if the network is perfect, even if like everything is connected, everything is alive, uh, all the processes are running, they can no longer make decisions. Like it's like completely, they're completely stuck, they're completely deadlocked. That's not good. Again, kind of like that's, uh, you, you might say, okay, so let's just allow voting for two values. So there's going to be like uh, just green and blue. Uh, so, Uh, okay, actually, uh, I, I realized that like colors might not be super visible, so probably it's better to also show the background. Sorry about that. Okay, yeah. Uh, let's say that uh, we only have like this like green and blue things, so you could only vote for one of the two. And then with the three nodes, we always have a majority. So it seems like in some cases it actually works, except it doesn't work in, in this case. Because remember, we like want to allow some machines to fail permanently. And like optimistically, we want to like slightly less allow to uh, allow slightly less than half the machine to fail. And if this one goes down forever, it crashes and burns, uh, if it catches a deadly virus, then Again, we get a split vote here. Uh, we get uh, one vote for every value. Uh, and again, uh, we are stuck. Uh, so yeah, that's uh, kind of like the problem with naive voting. Naive voting can get stuck due to a split vote. Uh, actually, let's maybe, uh, I don't know. Uh, let's try to make notes here. Okay, our first algorithm is like naive voting. Uh, can get stuck due to split voting. Okay, uh, let's solve this split voting problem in the most brute force way. And as usual, uh, in science, in uh, software, in engineering, and nature is uh, a very good source of inspiration for solution. And uh, in this case, uh, like we are going to look at a human nature and we're going to look at countries with flawed democracy. Uh, countries where there are elections, but the elections are not competitive. There is like, you know, only one uh, guy who could potentially win uh, the post and become a president. So there's no question like who wins. Like, the uh, split voting is not possible because the game is rigged from the start and there is only one possible winner. And let's implement this like, algorithm. Uh, again, let's say that we start with, uh, let's call it, actually let's start writing our nails. Uh, read volume. Okay, uh, we have our like three uh, egg-shaped machines and let's say that one of them is a king. And I'm going to draw a crown, which is going to be like yellow. Okay, that's not possible. Okay, yeah, uh, <laughs> like, you know, looks uh, more like, like a, a bird's plumage, but let's imagine that that's a crown. And let's imagine that this node is actually like the Tsar of like this cluster of three nodes. And this node just goes and tells everyone what value 
they should vote for. And because its original value is green, it just tells everyone, hey, we are voting for green here. And then all the nodes vote for okay. vote for green. And then the green gets unanimously, unanimously, well, everyone goes for green, and it's like obviously is the winning day. So uh, that's kind of like grid going. Uh, we pick a single node, we say that, hey, this node is a leader, and while we do vote, there is only a single value on a ballot, there is only a single candidate, and a node can have only one choice, it must vote for the state. And this like obviously cures us from uh, the split voting problem, because well, like if you have only one candidate on the ballot, like no possibility of a split vote, no possibility of like you know polarization in your society where like half of the society supports one candidate and another half of the society supports the second candidate because well, there's only one candidate on the ballot. Like who who could invent a better system? But as in real life, uh, this suffers from a problem and. What happens if like our leader dies? What if like, what if the king is dead? Well, we are stuck. Uh, there's no like way uh, these could proceed within the limits of our algorithm because hey, we said like, hey, the leader, the leader decides what we are voting for and if the leader is dead, uh, then uh, no vote, no votes, uh, no voting takes place. We could have like sort of like tried to say that hey, well maybe if the leader is dead then like we make this one a leader, but because messages can be delayed, this like doesn't actually work because uh, the leader might not actually be dead, it might actually alive, it might like you know uh, just being like uh, out of uh, cell phone network for a while. And then, like you know, it's it's really really bad when you try to say that you are a new king while the old king like still still alive. Like if you watched the uh, Death of Stalin a movie, like you like, you know it that it depicts that situation like perfectly. Uh, and kind of like yeah, so we, we we need to we need to do something better here. Okay, so uh, let's uh, get back to our notes. So rig uh, So good new no, split. Votes that uh, their leader can die. And again, kind of like a kind of person would probably invent some kind of a democracy, some way to, like, you know, elect a leader so that uh, everyone is happy with uh, them. But again, we are mathematicians, so we are going to, we're going to, to do a crisis. We are just going to say that, hey, everyone gets to be a dictator, a leader at the same time. Except that they kind of like do it differently. Uh, okay, that's maybe hard to uh, describe, but okay, let's give every node a crown, but each node would get a crown of different color. And uh, okay. So like, everyone is leader, and now, uh, kind of like, let's uh, let, let's look at this like red node. So red node is the leader uh, of the red faction, uh, but uh, when we speak about uh, the green, it just has to vote. Okay, uh, this is okay. This is super confusing. So let me try uh, different. So imagine that we are like actually like three parallel histories where like okay uh, here we execute this rigged voting with green as a leader here we execute uh, the rigged voting with red as a leader and here we execute uh, split voting uh, rigged voting with blue as a leader and kind of like let's say that like okay uh, this one decides for green eventually, uh, and this one decides for 
red. And the last one decides for blue. OK, uh, that turned out to be blue. OK, and this is going to be red. Uh, yeah, so three, three like, completely separate histories. Uh, OK, uh, the cool trick is that we actually could, like, you know, uh, run all those three algorithms at the same time. So the nodes vote in green ballot, and in the green ballot, they select the green node. Uh, so let me like actually uh, now. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah. So basically, uh, yeah, I'll uh, just run the three at the same time. In the green ballot, they select the green node. In the red ballot, they select the uh, red value. And in the blue ballot, they select uh, the blue value. So we kind of like, essentially, uh, we say that we have an infinite number of ballots, and uh, every ballot is rigged. Every ballot has a dedicated leader, and that leader decides uh, which value gets selected in that particular ballot. And like different ballots might select uh, different values. So the good thing, okay, let's actually call this, I don't know how, uh, how to call it. Uh, let's call it, I, I don't want to say it's like repeated because like we don't repeat those temporarily. We kind of like do this like, okay, let's, let, let's just call it everyone gets to be a dictator. Everyone is a dictator rigged voting, which means that you kind of like actually hold like many rounds of voting and in different rounds of voting, uh, different nodes are leaders. So, uh, here, the good property is that some rounds will not get stuck. So again, uh, let's say that we killed this process. Well, that's not a problem because this will kill uh, the red ballot and the red ballot uh, like, will not complete, but Uh, the blue and the green ballots uh, will complete and we'll select like, some values, like, potentially different values, like, probably different values because uh, th this one is going to vote for blue and uh, this one is going to vote for green. Uh, and that's kind of like, problematic, but like, it's okay. Uh, so again, uh, this is like, uh, I'm, not, I'm not sure I can explain this clearly enough, but really kind of like, the idea is that like, we run many like basically, we run many instances of rigged volumes. Okay, actually, yeah, uh, let's call it like more like in a more boring way. Uh, Instantiate. I don't know how to spell this word. Uh, rigged voting many times. Okay, the good thing here is. Uh, and like each instance is will be calling the ballot. Okay. The good thing here is that some ballots will conclude if we kind of like don't kill everyone. If we kill less than majority of the nodes, then there's going to be a ballot formed by this majority and in that ballot, and well, in every ballot uh, with this majority, a node, uh, like some value will be selected. But we have like bad property. And the bad property is like, where's the value? Where's consensus? Consensus, like different ballots select different values. And that's kind of like problematic because, well, our, our job was to select like a single value. And uh, we said, OK, let's vote. But voting doesn't work because voting gets split to, uh, voting can get stuck to split voting due to split voting. Uh, we say, OK, split voting is bad. Let's, let's declare an only dictator. We have no split voting, but we have another problem. Uh, now, if our dictator dies, we are again stuck for a different reason. 
uh, we said, okay, uh, no worries. Let everyone be a dictator. Let's like repeat our re-voting again and again and again and again until some instance is going to succeed and to select some value. But here we kind of like throwing uh, the water with the baby out of the bathtub uh, because, well, now like, our like, task, our job was to select a single value. And now like different balance uh, want to uh, select different values. Uh, so this brings us to like closer to like the core idea of consensus. Uh, so again, let's uh, draw this uh, simpler, uh, smaller. Okay, so we have our three nodes. And we'll be thinking about, uh, we'll be thinking in terms of uh, repeated ballots. So uh, what I'm kind of like uh, drawing here uh, is like not like this is like not a history. So uh, when I like draw a history, uh, a behavior I, like always like throw this like arrow, uh, which is like the time. This is like not the case here. Like this is this is not a history. This all happens uh, in parallel. It's like parallel balance, and uh, each balance has okay, different kings. Okay, let's, uh, do we have a star here? Uh, okay, no star, okay. Let me attempt to draw a crown again. Oh, actually it's, I feel like almost looks like a real crown. Uh, that's great. Uh, so that's, uh, okay, so okay, okay. And let's say like, okay, we even like round robin this. So every, but here has like its own primary, its own leader, uh, its own like supreme commander. Uh, okay, but, okay. Uh, this one is actually not good because we only want to allow a single, uh, single uh, leader. Okay, uh, this one. Okay, here. Uh, okay, this uh, this one is more recent. I guess so. Okay, current ballot, and uh, each ballot, each ballot selects values. And like our like current problem is well, like different uh, ballots select different values, and this is kind of like exactly what we want to prevent with our consensus. Uh, how do we solve this problem? Okay, let's solve it in a brute force way. Let's make sure that if any two ballots select a value, then the value chosen therein is exactly the same. So we basically want to kind of like prohibit it and want to say, hey, uh, if this one shows red, then this one also needs to be red, and this one also needs to be red. We don't want uh, to miss colors here. And to uh, kind of like clarify here, uh, once we start running multiple ballots at the same time, uh, we get an extra outcome for a ballot. So again, a ballot only votes for a single value, and this value might be chosen. But it might also be the case that the particular ballot uh, gets stuck. So a node, like half of the nodes, might decide to like not vote in this ballot at all like to protest against strict voting or whatever, like just say, okay, yeah, I'm not going to uh, cast a vote. And like, if you say, have a ballot of like three nodes and only one node casts its vote, then we do not declare a leader. Uh, we do not declare a winning value in this ballot because to uh, declare a winning value, we actually need majority of all nodes. We don't uh, need only majority of the nodes that voted because again, in a synchronous system, it's actually hard to say who voted and who didn't vote. Uh, okay, uh, so our job is to uh, make it such that uh, no two concurrent ballots can select uh, the same value. And let's focus here. Let's say that, okay, let's imagine that we are like this, this primary. So, okay, this is 
let me draw a self portrait here. Okay, so this is me. Uh, I'm a leader. I'm a leader of a particular mount. And I know that, okay, I'm pondering, uh, as, as a leader of a ballot, I am chosen the value this ballot goes for. And I'm pondering which one I need to choose because, okay, there is like red, green, and blue. And I'm thinking, hey, uh, which one should I pick? And my task is like really, really hard because uh, I want to pick a safe value, uh, a value such that if I pick it, then any other ballot, if it concludes, it will pick exactly the same value. Like, uh, what I want to avoid is uh, the case where I pick red and someone picks blue, and both of these get at least two votes. That's going to be bad. Okay, that's like, you know, a like hard task because the amount of ballots is accountably infinite. Because, uh, yeah, uh, I didn't say this explicitly, but you see that like we have like three nodes here, but I'd like draw like five ballots because this the first node might actually be a leader for like the first ballot, but also for the fourth ballot. Like again, those two ballots is a good concurrent. So, uh, my job as a leader uh, here is like pretty tough. Like I need to think about like infinite amount of things. So, uh, let's simplify this. The first simplification is that we arrange ballots, uh, uh, we arrange ballots in uh, a single line uh, such that, okay, there's like infinity of, uh, actually, uh, copy paste, copy paste is good. So let me do, yeah, I didn't realize that this all happens uh, in confines of a like, green rectangle. Uh, uh, where is it? Okay, so uh, I arrange ballots in a straight line. And the good thing here is that there is like still infinite uh, infinity of ballots, but most of the infinity is to the right of me. So here it is like infinity ballots. Uh, let me try to draw the infinity sign. Oh, okay. this actually, this actually looks, look, looks like infinity. Uh, that's great. And uh, to the uh, other side of me, there's like going to be just, you know, some finite number of n bytes, which kind of like doesn't really make my job uh, easier. Uh, but again, uh, it allows me to start. Okay, so I want to pick among these three values, uh, red, green, blue, a value uh, which will not conflict with any ballot to the left of my ballot. Uh, uh, and uh, will not conflict with any value to the right of my ballots. And, uh, well, uh, to the left there is like one million ballots, which is like a lot, but well, we can manage. And to the right, there's like infinity of ballots, which is like, I don't know how to start here. Uh, but let's see. Uh, let's say that uh, I picked some value, let's say like green, and green, I pick you, and it ended up conflicting uh, with uh, the value chosen in this ballot. Well, I can assume that the leader here, like uh, this circle with a crown, runs exactly the same algorithm that I am running. And so he also cares not to select uh, a value uh, which will conflict with my ballot. And that's great. That means that I actually only need to care about ballots to the left of me. Because again, uh, if I make sure that uh, my value doesn't conflict with values which could be chosen in uh, any of these n ballots, then it also won't conflict with any values over here because, well, suppose there is a conflict. Suppose there is a conflict 
on this bar. Well, one. Then when this leader uh, was chosen a value, uh, he would care to choose it so that to not conflict with my ballot. So again, because we like uh, linearize all our ballots, uh, it is enough for me uh, to only care about earlier ballots. The problem though is that earlier here is kind of like whistle war. Uh, these ballots are not necessarily arranged uh, in terms of which finishes first. They all run concurrently. So although I am a uh, leader in this ballot and I'm just like pondering uh, which value to choose, it might be the case that some ballot over here have already chosen a value. And say this ballot over here haven't chosen a value yet. It is like only thinking uh, what to choose. So again, kind of like uh, this ordering of ballots is not in terms of time, it's just like arbitrary, uh, arbitrary relationship, uh, arbitrary relation, uh, just so that uh, each particular ballot needs to reason uh, only about ballots earlier. Okay, uh, so uh, let's uh, zoom in to the picture we have. Oh, yeah, let's literally, yeah, let's literally, uh, literally zoom in. Okay, so I'm a leader of a ballot, and I want to choose a value uh, which will not conflict uh, with any of the ballots to the left of me. Uh, the problem is, again, those ballots are still running. And I don't actually know, like some, some of these ballots might actually conclude in the future. So I don't yet know uh, what is the result of those ballots. But what can I do? And this is like the core idea. I could prevent those ballots from completing. I can pick a majority of the nodes and let's say I pick, okay, let's say I pick myself because well, I'm leader. Uh, why not? So I pick myself and I pick like uh, another ball here. And uh, we, for, we form a quorum, uh, we form a majority. And uh, I make a promise and I also make uh, this one ball over here to also promise that we are not going to cast our votes in earlier ballots uh, unless we have already cast it. Uh, so uh, let's say, uh, okay, let's look at this ballot. And uh, let's uh, say that this ballot hasn't even started yet and uh, no values uh, was voted for. So again, uh, let's actually, uh, okay, uh, we are going to, okay, let, let's say that this uh, ballot was voting for red and like uh, someone was like, voting here. Uh, but here, like, uh, there, there is no vote. Okay, so uh, I promise that we just not gonna vote. So again, let's uh, use this. Okay, let's like black black rectangle. Black rectangle symbolizes that hey, uh, we promise that uh, we are not going to vote in this ballot because there are two of us. Uh, I actually know that, hey, this ballot can no longer conclude. Uh, so I know that whatever value I choose here is going to be safe with respect to this particular earlier ballot because I made two nodes to not vote in this ballot. And uh, that means because no, ballot, no votes were cast in this ballot, uh, and that means it like, cannot conclude. It is powerful, but that's something. So again, uh, I need to deal with n ballots. Uh, I dealt with like uh, one of them. Uh, but let's extend this. Uh, let's say that I pick uh, like a quorum here, uh, and I forbid members of this quorum uh, from voting in any of the earlier ballots. Uh, let's look at the first ballot. So uh, what happens here? Uh, 
the problem here, uh, okay, the problem here is that this it is the problem here is that I don't know, I don't want feel. Uh, okay. okay, so the problem here is that kind of like promising to not vote doesn't work because this node, uh, this node has already casted its vote for it. Uh, well, but yeah, at least. Yeah. At least uh, this one, like myself, uh, can promise not to vote. But the cool thing here is that, okay, although we have a vote here for the red value, we know that each ballot votes for a single value only, because, well, each ballot has a leader and each ballot is a ring voting. And that is excellent. So, because I know that. The outcomes of this ballot, either that a red value gets chosen or nothing gets chosen. Like it is not possible uh, for uh, this ballot to end up selecting a green value because there is already a red vote here and uh, all those are of the same color for a single ballot. And that actually kind of like sort of the end of it. Uh, let's now collect all our thoughts together. Okay, so uh, I'm a leader of a vote. Uh, I want to select a city value, uh, which is not going to conflict with any of the earlier ballots, meaning that uh, if any of these ballots has already completed or will have completed in the future, then the value it completes with is going to be the same value that I choose. Yeah, that's, that, that's my goal. Uh, how do I do this? Uh, well, I pick a quorum of nodes and they say, hey, folks, you are not allowed to vote for uh, ballots which are before mine. You might still want in ballots after me. And in fact, if uh, a leader from a future ballot comes to me now and says, hey, Alex, you are not allowed to vote in your own ballot, well, I will not like you. Uh, but for this quorum that I chose, I know that, hey, this quorum uh, is not allowed to vote in earlier ballots. And uh, I also ask the members of this quorum to tell me their votes with all this information. I actually know the future of all the previous ballots because for every ballot over here, uh, for every ballot over here, there might be only two cases. First is that none of members of my chosen quorum voted in this ballot. So, uh, and they promised to not vote. So in this ballot, we have a majority nodes of nodes which credibly promised that they are not going to vote. Then we know that this particular ballot is stuck and it never is going to select it. Uh, otherwise, uh, we uh, might have a situation like this where like some nodes voted for and some nodes abstained from voting. Uh, but we know that all nodes that have voted for uh, voted for the same value, uh, and that if this ballot ever concludes, okay, can you see like this? Okay, uh, if this ballot ever concludes, it's going to conclude for this value. So yeah, uh, in this picture, like this ballot might end, uh, might end up like this because well. And it's not over here, might promise not to vote due to like some node uh, on the right. Uh, but it might also vote still for uh, the red value because, well, a single ballot uh, votes only for red value. And in that case, well, the red value is uh, going to be the chosen one. Uh, okay, let me show you. Okay, so 
this one, uh, this ballot is stuck in, this ballot uh, stays red value. And that's kind of it, because again, for every previous ballot, uh, I know that either it's never going to get included, or I know the value uh, it could possibly conclude with. Uh, moreover, if there are two ballots that could possibly conclude with some value, that value needs to be the same, because, well, uh, leaders of those previous ballots execute the same conscious algorithm which selects the same value. So it's it's not uh, so again kind of like it's not possible for me to see a situation like this. Because well uh, this one is uh, actually, uh, maybe, uh, maybe even, well, actually, uh, yeah, let me think. I think, uh, okay, uh, I think this one is possible, so it is. Uh, let me clean this up a little bit. So, uh, it is possible uh, for me to see like one wallet ballot which could choose green and uh, one ballot which could choose red because when this ballot was voted it could have used this form and uh, so uh, the situation is it so uh, this node uh, this node voted red however uh, when um, this ballot uh, was uh, selecting the quorum, it selected those two nodes and promised those two nodes to not uh, to not vote in the ballot. Uh, but it didn't get uh, didn't get a message from this node because it wasn't in the quorum. So it thought, okay, I have only one ballot to the left of me this ballot is never going to get concluded so i know that the only uh possible uh well it's never going to be concluded so i could pick arbitrary value and i pick green and then me because i pick a different quorum i realize that he actually there is a single uh vote cast here so uh here is red here is green but because i know that this ballot uh, selected green, I also know that from a perspective of a leader of this ballot, this ballot cannot conclude because, well, this picked green one, uh, it could only pick a green one if this one selects a green uh, or gets stuck, and because I know that it selected red, it cannot select it green, uh, hence it must get stuck. So anyway, uh, given, like, uh, after I made a quorum of nodes uh, to promise to never complete previous ballots, and after I have looked at all their values, I know uh, the possible outcomes uh, of every uh, ballot before me. And I also, and because I also know that those outcomes cannot conflict, uh, I can actually select a value uh, which is safe for me. Oh, kind of like this. Like that's this is kind of like the technical part of Pax as well. Like you really need to formulate uh, like this exact safety condition. But like roughly speaking, uh, I looked at all the previous. Uh, I looked at the votes for all the previous ballots. Uh, I looked at the ballot with the highest number, which has a vote, and I said, okay, that vote is like my uh, safe pick. Uh, if there isn't a such a ballot, so again, I, there is no single vote casting at all, I can pick arbitrary value. And that sort of actually uh, is uh, an assist algorithm. Again, proven that uh, this is correct and uh, that this also, Jerry's uh, Leibniz, is like out of scope here. But hopefully, uh, this gives you enough intuition to, again, maybe uh, sit. Uh, 
at New Year's Eve with like pen and pencil, uh, well, pen and pencil, uh, pencil and paper, and uh, work it out for yourself and like reason uh, how this actually works. But let's recap. Okay, so uh, we want to uh, solve consensus. Uh, we want a bunch of nodes to select a particular value. We get there iteratively. Uh, we invent various algorithms. Those algorithms get stuck for various reasons, uh, and we patch, like literally brute forcefully patch those reasons until we get to the one that uh, works. Uh, the first, uh, well, uh, the question in the chat, what is today's topic? Well, uh, likely the recording will be on YouTube, so you could always uh, watch from the beginning to uh, learn what the topic is, but we discuss consensus algorithm. We kind of like look at consensus as mathematics, like, like uh, why consensus work, what it, what it is as a mathematical theorem. And we kind of like construct consensus algorithm uh, from scratch. So we start with a simple goal. Uh, we say, okay, uh, we have a bunch of machines, let uh, each machine vote for a particular value, and if we get majority votes uh, for some value, that value gets chosen. The problem with majority voting is that we can get split votes. When, like, of three machines, one machine voted for red value, the other machine voted for green value, and the third machine just died. Again, there is, like, uh, there is no value with two votes, so we are stuck due to split vote. To solve uh, the split voting problem, we rig our voting. We say, okay, uh, we will be voting for a single value only. We select a process, uh, we select a dedicated process, we make it a leader of a voting and make its job to choose the value which is voted on. Then other nodes still vote, but again, vote kind of like is trivial. They just cast their value, their vote for this single value that's on a belt. Uh, this obviously cannot get uh, to a split vote because, uh, well, there's only one ability to vote for, but uh, it might get stuck when a leader dies. Uh, because, well, uh, without a leader, there is no one to decide what value they are voting for. To solve a problem with a leader which gets stuck, we replicate this algorithm many times. Uh, we say, okay, node one is a leader, but for the first ballot. Node two is a leader, but for the second ballot. Node three is a leader, but for the third ballot. And for the fourth ballot, we make node one a leader again. So we have like this countable amount of ballots, which are all running concurrently. Uh, every ballot runs this rigged voting algorithm. In every ballot, a leader uh, selects a value to vote for, and then everyone votes for this value. Because we run balance concurrently, uh, if majority, if there is a majority of processes which are not dead, then we have uh, a leader in there, and those ballots are going to succeed. So we fixed uh, getting stuck due to the loss of a leader. The problem, though, is that we lost consensus code. In our uh, concurrent ballots, different ballots might select a uh, different value. Like it might be the case that green won in ballot one and blue won in ballot two. And how do we select uh, which is the overall winner of consensus? We cannot say, hey, ballot two is higher, so uh, ballot two wins overall and uh, red wins overall, because maybe in five minutes, ballot 100 finishes and uh, the winner there is like purple. So again, we, we cannot just like say hey, like, uh, the highest ballot wins. Uh, we fix this in a very brute force way. We just mandate that whenever a leader of a ballot chooses a value to vote for, it chooses a safe value, such value that no other ballot will ever elect a different value. Uh, this is a hard problem because there is an infinite amount of other ballots we need to worry about. Uh, still, the problem is tractable. Uh, the first step is to order all the ballots in a single line, uh, actually number them and say, hey, this is ballot one, ballot two, ballot three, ballot four, 
and say that when a leader picks a safe value, it only needs to care a balance, about balance with lower numbers. So a leader for ballot five uh, needs to pick value which doesn't conflict, conflict with balance one, two, three, and four. And that is enough uh, to remove conflicts between any two ballots. Because if, say, ballot 70 and ballot 92 conflict, then the leader uh, of the uh, ballot 92 made a mistake because the, the leader of the 92, when it was chosen, uh, when it was choosing its value, it should have chosen a value which wouldn't conflict with 72. So again, everyone cares uh, about lower ballots, uh, but that means that for any uh, two uh, pairs of ballots, uh, like some leader resolves a conflict. Okay, uh, how to, and this is like the message simplification, because uh, there is only a finite amount of ballots with uh, lower numbers. How to select a safe value, which doesn't conflict with any of the previous ballots? Well, the first step is uh, to make sure that the ground doesn't shift from within us. Uh, the first step is to make sure that uh, the outcome of all those previous ballots is fixed. Uh, to do that, a leader of a ballot selects a quorum of nodes, a majority, and asks them to abstain from voting in any earlier ballots. This uh, makes sure that uh, uh, that the outcomes for previous ballots are fixed. If uh, a given quorum didn't vote in a particular ballot, then after it promised to abstain from voting, this ballot is stuck to you. It cannot complete. And the leader only needs to uh, worry about ballots where this quorum have or some members of this quorum have already casted their votes. But that's it, because the leader could just ask this quorum to tell uh, the leader everyone, uh, everything that the quorum knows, basically the set of votes that were cast. And essentially the picture that the leader says uh, looks like this, hey, uh, in uh, ballot one, uh, like someone voted for red in ballot two, someone voted for uh, green in ballot three, everyone promised to, uh, no one voted and everyone promised to never vote. And uh, the leader says, okay, so kind of like, Ballot one uh, thinks about picking red, and ballot two thinks about picking green. But actually, uh, the leader of the second ballot, when uh, they chose green as a value for this ballot, they probably had a good reason to choose green. They knew that the first ballot cannot conclude. And that's why actually A, green uh, was safe uh, in uh, ballot two, and they know that ballot three and ballot four cannot complete because there is a quorum uh, which promised of state from voting. And therefore, uh, that value from the third ballot is still safe for me. And I'm also going to pick green. And uh, yeah, that works. Uh, more specifically, well, this is safe because uh, we pick in, uh, a safe value for every ballot, but it also enjoys a considerable amount of limits. Uh, as long as we have uh, a majority of uh, replicas are fully connected and able to exchange messages, then uh, some ballot uh, where the leader is from this connected majority starts and that concludes because, well, all message, uh, all message pass, and uh, we get uh, our consensus. And that's sort of it. Hopefully, uh, after uh, this lecture, uh, every single uh, one of you can uh, come up with like their own consensus algorithm because it's actually not that hard. Uh, it really is just like solving a series of problems. Uh, the only kind of like. The only non-trivial idea here, which is kind of like, hey, not just like do brute force solution, is this idea but we can like run many ballots concurrently. Like everything else is just, hey, we have a problem, let's like solve this problem like most of this way. But again, this was mathematics. 
this was like a theory about these discrete systems uh, which have trajectories which evolve over time um, discreetly and deterministically. This is pretty far from the actual code we need to write to make such a system performant, reliable, correct, uh, and all that stuff. And for that, for pragmatics of consensus, uh, I'll see you next year. Thanks for uh, listening and please enjoy your uh, winter uh, break or summer break if you are in the Southern Hemisphere. Uh, see you uh, next year.